Hey, 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 everyone. Anthony Fantano here, Internet's busiest music nerd. I hope you are doing well. Let's give some thoughts and critiques and opinions on this new post from Lana Del Rey, where she is addressing the culture, as it were, talking about her own work and uh, criticisms of it. Uh, A lot of people reacting to this, a lot of people talking about this, uh, so let's give my own thoughts over here. I don't want to be accused of not giving Lana her piece, her say, or uh, not having read the whole thing or tried to understand what Lana is saying in totality, so allow me, if you will, to read this entire thing just so no aspect of what Lana is saying is ignored or overlooked. So as she starts, question for the culture. Now that Doja Cat, Ariana, Camilla, Cardi B, Kalani, and Nicki Minaj and Beyonce have had number ones with songs about being sexy, wearing no clothes, fucking, cheating, etc. Can I please go back to singing about being embodied, feeling beautiful by being in love, even if the relationship is not perfect or dancing for money or whatever I want without being crucified or saying that I'm glamorizing abuse? I'm fed up with female writers and alt singers saying that I glamorize abuse when in reality, I'm just a glamorous person singing about the realities of what we are all now seeing are very prevalent, emotionally abusive relationships all over the world. With all of the topics women are finally allowed to explore, I just want to say over the last 10 years, I think it's pathetic that my minor lyrical exploration detailing my sometimes submissive or passive roles in my relationships has often made people say I've set women back hundreds of years. Let this be clear. I am not a feminist, but there has to be a place in feminism for women who look and act like me. The kind of woman who says no, but men hear yes. The kind of women who are slated mercilessly for being their authentic, delicate selves. The kind of women who get their own stories and voices taken away from them by stronger women or by men who hate women. I have been honest and optimistic about the challenging relationships I've had. Newsflash, that's just how it is for many women. That was sadly my experience up until the point that those records were made. So I just want to say it's been a long 10 years of bullshit reviews up until recently, and I've learned a lot from them. But I also feel it really paved the way for other women to stop putting on a happy face and just to be able to say whatever the hell they wanted to in their music. Unlike my experience where if I even expressed a note of sadness in my first two records, I was deemed literally hysterical as though it was literally the 1920s. Anyways, none of this has anything to do about much, but I'll be detailing some of my feelings in my next two books of poetry, mostly in the second one with Simon and Schuster. Yes, I am uh, still making personal reparations with the proceeds of the books to my choice of Native American foundations, which I am very happy about. And I'm sure there will be tinges of what I've been pondering in my new album that comes out September 5th. So album announcement two. Uh, Thanks for reading. Happy quarantining. Love, uh, Lana. So let's take this piece by piece. First section, first, right off the bat, I don't feel like it was really necessary to, to name and list the artists that she named and listed in this piece, especially since in the context of her argument and her issue, what is stuck in her craw, her reason for bringing them up doesn't really make sense. I mean, the fact that they're singing about uh, sex and cheating and wearing no clothes, uh, that is not the same thing as what you have sung about on your first two records. Um, the, the idea that the audience and especially critics should accept or not critique or critique positively what you have said on those albums and future works that address those same topics in the same way, just because songs on totally different topics by totally different artists uh, get a pass or are reviewed positively, there's not really a sensible correlation there. So why you would say one has to come hand in hand with the other, um, I don't really know. Next, the sentence that really grabbed my attention in the first portion here is, can I please go back to singing about being embodied, feeling beautiful by being in love, even if the relationship is not perfect or dancing for money, et cetera, et cetera. That makes me wonder 
and and I'm sure it is the case at least to some degree because if if these reactions and these criticisms did not bother Lana then she would not be writing this post in the first place so obviously these criticisms and these reactions are driving her emotionally driving her to communicate certain things at least to this degree and this is a pretty big degree here okay this has a million likes on it the entire internet is talking about this piece if she wanted these feelings hidden then she wouldn't have posted this but it makes me wonder whether or not these criticisms are impacting her creative process and if she's singing about these relationships now in a different way and in a different light because she knows that it will be more palatable to critics which if that is the case uh, I mean, look, I love the new Lana record, but personally, I would find it sad if she were writing in a certain way lyrically just to appease the critics, just to appease uh, me, uh, not me specifically, but me as a critic generally. And uh, let me say before we go on deeper into the piece that if if that is the case, um, I don't know if that's the best thing for, for Lana personally. When it comes to what makes you happy, with your creative process, fuck the critics. Fuck what the critics think and say. Who cares what they think and say? It does not matter. As long as you are happy, you're making the music you want to make, and especially if it is selling, okay? Because if we look at Lana's numbers across her career, album numbers, sales, streams, uh, her old stuff sold the best. So if that's what you want to say, and that's what your audience wants to hear, in the age of the internet where you have that direct delivery method to your audience, you don't need a gatekeeper to give your audience music. You don't need a critic to say, hey, guys, you, you, you really should listen to this, Lana. Uh, especially if you have the whole music industry machine behind you promoting your shit when you drop something new. You don't need a, a critical cosign. It does not matter how uh, backwards I think the gender politics on your records are. <laughs> it truly and honestly doesn't. That may be my opinion, and I may express that opinion. But uh, if, if that's what you want to do, then I, I guess do it. The next line in this piece, I will say, I do like a lot because it does make me see her work in a slightly different light. It doesn't fix my problems with the vocals and the instrumentals or anything like that. But I, I love the way that she puts here that... Um, that she is not trying to glamorize the abusive themes or the neglectful themes or the negative aspects of these relationships she sings about uh, with the glamorous backdrop they are given instrumentally. She just happens to be a glamorous person who wants to make music that sounds this way, and she is just delivering these types of stories over it. It's just... Uh, an occurrence of these things coming together because this is her story and this is the type of music she wants to make. One is not trying to imply the other is a good thing. Again, I do like that she she frames it that way because, uh, uh, look, that's totally fair game. That could totally be the case. You know, th there's no reason not to take Lana at her word here. And I think uh, uh, writers who have characterized it, and if I have, uh, you know, in the opposite way, uh, Mia Culpa. Mia culpa, uh, you know, sorry for in misinterpreting. Uh, if that was, in fact, you know, my issue, I, I think other writers should uh, uh, not be hesitant to, um, you know, say the same thing or make the same apology. However, I think as an artist, you, you do certainly have to, you know, there is some responsibility, a level of responsibility there in terms of thinking about and trying to understand how the audience, and not just critics, but how the audience as well, because certainly there are listeners who have this takeaway too, uh, but just enjoy your stuff. But you want to make sure that the audience is interpreting your message correctly. You know, you don't want to give the wrong signals. The next portion here, she says she thinks it's pathetic that her minor lyrical exploration detailing my sometimes submissive or passive roles in relationships, uh, saying it's been characterized as setting women back hundreds of years. If, if someone has said that, I, <laughs> I do think that's maybe a little overboard. If I've said something to that note, uh, I, I will agree that that is a little overboard. Having said that, uh, one, of my, one of my prime issues with these themes on her older records isn't so much that they were there and that they were addressed. I mean, I do love music and songs that explore dark themes and negative topics that don't necessarily have like a silver lining or a, you know, happy, uplifting takeaway or anything like that, or even a moral message in some cases. And, uh, and that is the case for male and female artists that I listen to. Uh, but my issue is that, uh, 
these themes on your older records are not really balanced out with much of anything else. And much of the time, thematically, it seems like you're kind of revolving around these ideas a little too heavily. Like if there was uh, some more variation, if it seemed like you weren't singing about the same kinds of relationship dynamics over and over and over, um, maybe it wouldn't stand out as being such an issue, but uh, uh, I, I can't say for other critics what they would or would not interpret charitably in, in terms of your music. All I can do is speak for myself. So then Lana drops a little bit of a bombshell here saying that she's not a feminist, which I think uh, it doesn't matter who you are. I think you're entitled to that opinion if you don't want to identify as a feminist or any other philosophy or ideology or whatever, you're you're free to do that. I don't think that Lana saying that is necessarily an unendorsement of women's rights or anything like that. Then Lana goes on to say something that I think is pretty interesting and certainly fair, that uh, there must be room in feminism for people like her. And I think to a degree, certainly there are. You know, I, I, I from my understanding, while I know that there are more radical sects of uh, the community, just like there are a lot of uh, social and political groups, um, generally I do get the sense from a lot of people who uh, online consider themselves feminists that uh, uh, feminism means that you are allowing women to make their choices, even if you deem those choices uh, bad, as long as that choice is of their own volition and it's uh, uh, being done. Uh, executed through their freedom to make that choice, live that lifestyle, whatever that is, even if that agency is Lana Del Rey being in a shitty relationship and she knows it's shitty and she just stays in the relationship anyway. And then she writes a dozen songs about it. But this section of the piece is really interesting because it makes me wonder if Lana has this separate problem with the feminist community that she needs to get out of the way here. Would you feel like you could be a feminist or that feminism would be the thing for you if you didn't think there was this antagonism coming from the community based on your art, your music, your narrative, your personal story? Going on from there, uh, Lana does try to ask for her flowers here, saying that in a way her sound and her messaging has paved the way for other women in music today. Uh, I think there is certainly no denying that sonically Lana has influenced quite a few people in the music scene. There are a, a lot of prevalent female artists today that I think uh, uh, borrow from her pillowy instrumental style and and the very dramatic vocal style as well, if even only to a, a slight degree. But uh, uh, again, can't deny that there is a musical influence. And if there's a musical influence, at least for some artists, there's most likely a, a narrative or a thematic influence as well. Although I don't know if you could really attribute this greater freedom that you might sense in uh, women in the music industry being able to say whatever the hell they want in their music to Lana, uh, to any major degree, I mean, I, I think you could actually maybe attribute that a, a, a little bit to the, the feminism that you're, you're saying you don't have anything to do with. Like, certainly you are not the only artist out there who's saying whatever the hell I want in my music. You know, I mean, I know you're the gangster Nancy Sinatra and everything, but, uh, you know, you're, you're not like the only person pioneering this. Generally speaking, I do think it is a good thing if uh, women in the arts community don't want to put a happy face onto their piece because they actually don't feel that way. Uh, that's, that's fine. That's good. And to whatever degree Lana has contributed to that, cool. Though finally here with the, uh, I, I guess, accusation of being accused of being emotionally hysterical like it's the 1920s, again, you know, that's, that's kind of a bit of feminist rhetoric there because that is a, an accusation or a characterization thrown at women who show the least bit of emotion. But um, I don't know if if that criticism is, is coming from the same group of people who are saying, well, you know, your your music setting women back hundreds of years. So I mean, if if it's a different group of people, you know, th those two lines, those two ideas come from different mindsets. Typically, I'm not getting the sense that it's that it's coming from that same group of, of people. Then she makes this really weird throwaway line, like anyways, none of this has anything to do about much like, I don't know, obviously, this, it makes you feel some type of way. If, if it didn't, I don't feel like you'd be doing this post. <laughs> so. Uh, I, I, I guess this is your attempt at segueing into the album announcement and everything and the poetry book announcement, but uh, uh, I, I don't know. I, I, this, this seems like a lot to you. And uh, 
Uh, look, at the end of the day, all I hope is that the music that you're coming out with is the music that you want to make, that you're happy to make. I, again, would hate to think that Lana is um, uh, watering down her message, whatever that message is, even if that message is disagreeable, uh, just so some critics will be happy, who by nature are difficult to please anyway. You know, I'm, I'm not going to say I'm the easiest person to please. And, and once more, I'll say, I loved your last record, hell of an album. And, uh, you know, while I did like the alteration in lyrical themes on that album, it didn't just boil down to that. The instrumentals were great. Production was fantastic. Vocal performances were better. Uh, the, the more elongated and ambitious song structures you went on were pretty cool as well. And truly and honestly, I would not mind it if you went back to some of those ideas in your past stuff, but you maintained, you know, those, those other very essential uh, improvements in your stuff. It would be another thing to go back to the instrumental and vocal quality of, of Born to Die and also go back to the themes. That would be an utter disappointment. So those are my thoughts on this. Uh, <laughs> let me know what you guys think about all this stuff in the comments down below. Uh, it's a lot to digest, but I, I think Lana did put out some interesting ideas here, uh, some revealing thoughts, also some stuff that I think could have just stayed in the, you know, uh, the, the drafts, but uh, uh, still it's out there. It's out there now. Uh, so that there it is. There it is. Over here next to my head is another video that you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Uh, Anthony Fantano, Lana Del Rey, uh, forever.